and I'll leave to you all the Right Honourable Prime Minister Helen Clark. Honourable Ministers Winston Peters, Honourable Lord Manuel Uni Laban, the Honourable Deputy Prime Minister of Samoa, Mr Telefoni, Honourable Deputy Prime Minister of the Cook Islands, Sir Terapai Mwate, Lord Mayor of Harvey, Gilbert Ehrlich, President of the New Zealand Pacific Business Council, your fellow councillors, business members, delegations, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of my fellow Pacific Highland Ministerial colleagues and our delegations here today, I say thank you very much, Mayor Harvey, and to you, Prime Minister Helen Clark, for your words of welcome to us from the Pacific this morning. We've come to this, the second Pacific Expo, the one that is much larger than the last one, the first one two years ago. As always, we from the Pacific are delighted to be here in New Zealand and we are pleased with a very warm welcome that we have received. Like you, Madam Prime Minister, we also wish to thank Gilbert Ehrlich and his New Zealand Pacific councillors for their untiring efforts to mount this expo. Special thanks myself go to Maya Harvey, and to the patron of the New Zealand Pacific Business Council, Honorable Winnie Laban, for inviting us and make it possible for us to be here this morning. This expo gives us all a unique opportunity to meet in one large venue, face to face, to discuss business and trade opportunities on a truly and Pacific basis. As the Right Honourable Prime Minister has said, there is indeed a large gap between the value and the volume of trade between New Zealand and the rest of the Pacific. Something of the order of $1 billion a year. And over the years, we have failed to breach this gap, despite some growth in our exports from the Pacific to New Zealand. There's no denying the fact that the realities are such that this gap will continue and will be hard to breach by trading commodities and manufactured products alone. But there is considerable room to increase our exports to New Zealand. And this is precisely why we are here this week to talk about our business ways, to find ways in which we can together increase the volume, the range, and the quality of our trade. We note with interest the holding of seminars and workshops this week on biosecurity and food safety requirements so that our Pacific exporters could comply with the entry requirements of the New Zealand market. But trade in commodities and manufactured products is only part of the whole issue of expanding and deepening our development partnership. There is the trade in services, in labor, in tourism, expertise and entrepreneurship, investment and transport that is just as important. The need for investment, for finance, entrepreneurship by individuals, by small firms and businesses from New Zealand is vital to narrowing the trade gap and to increasing the incomes of the Pacific people. In some ways, this used to happen with the former initiatives, the Spartica and PIDs 
or some two to three decades ago. There were some notable successes, and I do hope that in the forthcoming rounds of negotiations on a new PESA framework, there will be attempt to revive some of the positive features of these two initiatives that I have referred to. Another excellent example of this two-way trading partnership, which benefits us from the Pacific as well as the farmers of New Zealand, is the recognized seasonal employer scheme to which the Right Honorable Prime Minister has referred, a scheme that is of benefit to those specific countries that are now participating in it, and one to which we, from the Pacific peoples, Pacific governments, want to pay a special tribute to you, Honorable Prime Minister, to your government for taking that bold initiative. It is a very practical and effective way, form of cooperation, and one which we sincerely hope will be replicated by our other Pacific neighbor, Australia, and I see that quite a lot of Australians here this morning, that they may take that back to Canberra. Another example of the two-way partnership is in transport. We have had the Pacific Forum uh, line, one that was greatly assisted by New Zealand in its efforts to assist the Pacific Islands. We have won a recently concluded agreement with a New Zealand firm, Chathams Air, a small firm by New Zealand standard, but one which to us fits the bill. In terms of providing an, an essential catalyst in the development of our fledgling tourism industry in our national economy. Air Chathams is about to begin a domestic service in Tonga will base part of its operations in Tonga to service the domestic routes. And it is something that we have welcomed with open arms, the willingness, the readiness of Craig Emony and his company to be in Tonga to assist our domestic services. Something which we in Tonga don't have the expertise, nor the finance, nor the capability. Honorable Prime Minister, may I take this opportunity to pay a special tribute to you, your two ministers here in your government, for being a true friend of the Pacific. You have been a tower of strength in upholding the values of the Pacific peoples, in assisting them to achieve their development aspirations. And I have watched the Honorable Prime Minister over the past two years in the last two forums that we have had. She has been the guiding hand of the forum. And finally, to you, Gilbert Ehrlich, and your councillors, we want to say again, thank you very much for your tireless efforts over the years. Endeavouring as always to boost the two-way trade between New Zealand and the Pacific. The large number of people here today, the two deputy prime ministers, the ministers, the business people from the Pacific that are here this morning and tomorrow, is to me a testimony to their appreciation of your efforts and their commitment to this joint venture. And in this connection, it's hard to know, talking to some of the people from the Pacific, some of the Pacific exporters have now set targets of something like 5 to 10 percent annual growth in their export to New Zealand over the next few years. It won't be easy, but it's definitely achievable. And I think all of us here today should give it a wholehearted support, Malo Alpito of Africa.